Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 19. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Tash Irina. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tash, how are you? Long time no hear. Yeah, I've unfortunately been busy with、like, uni and things. But hey, it means that、I'm, I have a life, so that's good. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So,、um, how was your day? It was good.、Um, plenty of things going on, just while hanging out with friends, getting things done here and there. Okay, cool. And also joining us is the News Pony. Hello, Little Pony. How are you, News? I'm doing good. Thank you. Anything interesting happening to you today? Yeah, there is something interesting that happened.、Uh, recently, there was a bunch of people who actually asked me、uh, where do they get、um, pony episodes. So, yeah, I was、uh, thinking about which episodes to show them first for a new person starting the show. Things like that. Yeah,、mm. that, that is probably the most interesting that happened. Uh, this week. That's interesting. I think we can use that as a show topic.、Mm-hmm. So, anyway, let's move on to housekeeping. Usually, in housekeeping, we talk about what's going on with the show and the site, and sometimes what's going on with our daily lives. But once in a while, something comes up that catches my attention, and this is one of those times. Recently, Tara Strong did an interview with EQD. In the interview, Tara Strong mentioned Kiki, her friend's daughter, who has a brain tumor. And you can read the whole quote on the show notes. And thankfully, the operation was a success. Woohoo! And 80% of the tumor has been removed. But you can still help Kiki out. You can do this by donating to her. And if you can't donate, you can still pray for them and send her well wishes. They will be greatly appreciated. And links can be found in the show notes. On a cheerful note, today, July 7, 2012, Was the Malaysian premiere for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? The show starts at 8 30 a.m. and does not have any subtitle. This is great!、Um, so, what do you guys think? Finally! <laughs> yes, indeed, finally, after how many years? Two years? Wait, and it's on NTV7, isn't it? Yup. And、so、it will it... forever be two seasons late. <laughs> <laughs> But we still have ponies on TV and no subtitle, that's a positive, right? Yeah, indeed, I agree with that. One complaint that I have to make it's way too early. What do you mean、yeah. by way too early? 8 30 a.m., my friend. Oh, I see. But that's a normal time for kids' cartoons, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, but 8 30 a.m., my god, it's so early. Well, I think even like 9 a.m. would probably make a difference, but. I guess it depends on when they can actually slot it in and stuff. I think it's to test the water if the show is popular or not. And if it's popular, then it'll be pushed back later in the day. That's how the rating、yeah. system works. I think、if、so. If the show is good, then they get a better time slot. True. And also, they put in subtitles then. Oh no. Malay subtitles. <laughs> it's not、no. that bad. Well, well I, I guess there's like, the pros and cons to that. Like, if it doesn't have subtitles, it'll be like, it's good because then. <laughs> It's the original thing, but if it does have subtitles, then people who don't understand English as well could still follow. Yes, true, true. I mean, you must take the good with the bad. So, good thing we have ponies on TV, bad thing is we have a very early time slot. So, if they push the time slot to 9 or 9 30,、um, that's good. We don't have to wake up too early, but we have subtitles. <laughs> I don't really get this whole subtitle deal.、Uh, what is the issue with、uh, subtitles? Are we talking about the English subtitles? Or? No, subtitles for the show. It's not dubbing, it's just subtitle、um, where you can read what's going on in Malay. Oh, so that is bad. Not 100% sure. People might complain about it, but me personally, if it brings more fans to the show, I don't mind. Okay, you have a point. You have a point. And with that, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news topic. In today's news topic, hmm,、um, Tash, you haven't been on for a while. Why d o n t you read the news? Woohoo, yeah, gladly. So, our first news topic is affordable pony plushies available at Target? What is this sorcery? Have you ever wanted a pony plushie but you couldn't afford it? Well, now here is your chance to get an official Hasbro My Little Pony Friendship is Magic plushie! This plushie will be available in Target, an American supermarket, on July 29th, and it will be 5 inches in size. Okay, I'm trying to measure 5 inches with my hand now. That's not that big. And 
and the links and pictures can be found in the show notes. Any thoughts, guys? I think this is the first time ever it's an official product from Hasbro, right? In mm. terms of plushies? No, not really. They had the two robotic plushies, uh, the singing plushies, I remember, right? Oh, those, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do have those. But if you're talking about um, plushie, as in, I can hug this and you won't talk back to me, yes, these are the first. That's awesome. I kind of like it and I kind of don't. Um, my only complaint is with the mains and ah, the tails. Yes, I would agree. I with you agree. On that. But if it's affordable and five inches tall, I don't mind. Smaller, then you can carry it um, more mobile, easier. Yeah, and then like to be the typical Malay, I'll buy the main six and put it in my car. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Just make sure you don't um, cover up so that you can, you know, the rear view mirror can see the back. <laughs> no, must cover up rear view mirror to become typical Malay. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about uh, typical Malay and plushies. I-, I saw this one car who had all the Angry Birds at uh, the rear view mirror. All of them. How do they drive? It's ridiculous. How do you even see the back? It's, it's, it's a hazard. And it's not even the small Angry Birds. It's the, I think, like a beach ball kind of size. Oh, that's huge. It's ridiculous. Well... More business for the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I like the pony plushies. They look really cute. And yeah. they look quite accurate as well, which is good. Yeah, I would buy one actually. Yeah, if it's affordable. I mean, if I have all the money in the world, I'll buy White Dove's collection. But for what I have now, these Target plushies, well, they're the only thing I can afford. Yeah, I know, right? If I could get a plushie, I would get a pillow pet plushie. Oh, like oh. what Ian has? Is this a pillow pet one? Is the pillow pet the one where it's Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie? Yeah, those baby ones. Oh. Uh, oh, you mean the ones like um, like just the cutouts? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, those are not pillow pets. Pillow pets are like actual animal things and you can open them so oh. you can make them stand or you oh, can the, open them those and ones. them. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've seen that one before. And Today, yeah, so, someone mm-hmm. makes like pillow pet plushies on DeviantArt, like the My Little Pony pillow pet plushies, and I want one so badly. Like I said, if I have all the money in the world. And moving on to the next news, the original Smile lyrics by Amy Keating Rogers. At the recent 2012 BronyCon in New York, writer for the show Amy Keating Rogers revealed that they were original lyrics to the song. In the original lyrics, it included patter section, or also known as toxing. Links can be found in the show notes. So, who here has heard the original song? I have. Tash, you? I haven't. <laughs> you haven't? Really? I haven't. You haven't? Really? You haven't? No. Oh. Well, Actually, uh, it's quite an impressive feat because um, Imitating Rogers sang it herself. And the lyrics, well, they're kind of long, but they do include uh, the Derpy Do reference, which is quite awesome because uh, the interaction between uh, show creator and fans has reached such a level that it's simply amazing. Oh, uh, you're talking about Derpy Hoof. I-, I just remembered something. The line here says, Did you finally get that nasty cough clear up, Derpy Do? Yes, I follow your advice and drink Zakura's non cough brew. Um, if you guys remember what happened in the previous episodes, um, I think, what was that ep- previous episode called? I forgot. Um, Before the Smile episode? I think it was the one with Applejack has to go for rodeo contest and she lost and tell stuff and Derpy oh, yeah, do. yeah, that's right. And mm-hmm. remember that whole thing with Derpy's voice? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you heard me right, did you finally get that nasty cough cleared up, Derpy do? Yes, I followed your advice and drank Zakura's non-cough brew. So it's like Derpy has a new voice. Ah. I like this. That'd be cool actually, yeah. But anyway, uh, the song is pretty same yet different at the same time. Because the whole part where in the beginning, it started out like, My name is Pinkie Pie, hello, and I am here to say... How are you doing? It's totally different from the original... Sorry, not original. Well, it's from what we originally heard. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, if you want to listen to it, link's in the show notes. Okay, looks like I'm going to have something to listen to. <laughs> and download all of the downloads. All of the downloads. <laughs> okay, and moving on to the next news. Um, news, why don't you read this one? Yeah, okay. Erin Burnett from CNN talks about bronies. In a recent blog post by Erin Burnett from CNN, she talked about how there were a lot of remakes of classic cartoons from the 80s. 
one cartoon that she highlighted was My Little Pony and Friends, and how it too had a remake, and it was called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. After that, she went on to talk about the recent 2012 BronyCon, and then about Bronies. Links can be found in the show notes. What do you guys think about this? Well, the blog post was pretty interesting. Um, the way she talked about it was kind of... Um, how do I put it nicely? Um, she was passive-aggressive, really. Was it passive-aggressive? It was nice, yet somehow there were parts of it that made me like, uh, you. Well, I don't know. I've got, like, from what I've seen on Twitter, there were a lot of different reactions. Some of the fans were like, oh, thanks for actually doing this because it puts us in a more positive light. She wasn't being negative. She, she was trying... Well, how do I put this? She was really neutral. Neutral to the whole situation. Like, she likes the idea of us being fans of the show and us existing, yet she was trying to appeal to that other side of the demographic who think we are weird. So she was kind of neutral to it. Mm-hmm. And also to make things look like she was with us, she made her own pony sona. Ah, that was interesting. Yep. Rarity recolored. <laughs> well, I kind of like it, really. I mean, she's out there stating that she likes what we like and she likes it for what we... Well, there's a lot of likes. That's all I have to say. I would her... say that she, well, she was very enthusiastic about it. Um, you know, put us in a... Put bronies in a positive light. So, yeah, some positive media is always good for us. And with this, there'll be more new bronies to add to the herd. And talking about new bronies, um, news. Didn't you say that you had some friends who wanted in on the action? Yeah, I said that in the beginning. That's right. So it's quite an interesting thing. Um, a couple of days ago, uh, a bunch of people actually asked from me uh, where can they find uh, pony episodes. Yeah, um, don't ask how they actually got to know about it. <laughs> and yeah, and I was thinking, um, I've been given sort of like the task to introduce the show to them. And uh, the first episode that they have seen is uh, Winter Wrap Up. And then uh, there were two of them, and uh, they wanted a few more. So it got me thinking, uh, how do we actually get uh, people who are new to the show to get more interested in the show? So which episodes do we show them? So basically, they're almost falling into the four-episode trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Okay, cool. Um, well, uh, who's going to start this first? Well, since I'm the host, I think I should start it out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so anyway, um, they're girls, right? Yeah, they're both girls. Okay, Two so, girls. well, basically, how you want to approach this is to pander to what they like. So, since they're girls... This is very sexist of me, but art of the dress. Totally sexy. <laughs> art of the dress. Oh, come on, Norman. No, you can it's... do better than no, that. No, no, I mean, uh, okay, if I have to pick three episodes, um, art of the dress is one because it's a dressmaking episode, but there's also a hint of chaos and not really chaos, um, drama inside it. And if you notice the part where, I don't know what I'm wallowing in. That, that part where Rarity breaks down and she doesn't even know what to wallow. If I remember right, Dusty Cat says that that part of the show made him convinced that, okay, I love the show. You actually have a point because, come to think of it, Out of the Dress also features the whole of the main six. Which typically is a good thing to go by for a newcomer. Because and he also has a great song. Hey, yeah. Give me a second. Oh, no, what is that? I think that's the song. What's the name of the episode? Okay, it's suited for success. Suited for yes, success, suited. right. That's what I was going to point out, that it's like, Art of the Dress is the song. Suited yeah. for success is the episode. Well, I am not a good host, but I try my best. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, Suited for success. It's a really good episode. It may sound sexist, but it's a really good show to get girls into it because it talks about dressmaking and if you don't let people know what they're doing, do the thing they are doing, if that even makes sense, it will fail. And just let the people who knows what they're doing, let them do what they are doing. I don't even know if I make any sense. What did but... you just say? Uh, uh, mm, yes. Well, basically, basically, basically is... Um... To their own devices, basically. Yes, that one. Thank you. Tash. Actually, now that you've mentioned it, I, I believe that Out of the Dra- uh, Suited for Success is actually the most complicated episode in the whole uh, uh, in the whole series thus far. 
true, I mean, true. You, think, you think about it the episode is about um, the rarity trying to please everyone mm. end up not pleasing everyone including herself and then uh, the moral of the story they come to realize is that you shouldn't look a gift gift horse in the mouth <laughs> that you should just accept the uh, accept the gift and uh, enjoy it as it is don't ask for more or the other lesson is let people do what they do best because they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's correct. That's what I was trying to say from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and my second episode would be Sonic Rainboom because Sorry? Sonic Rainboom is an awesome episode. It has a lot of balance to it because it has a lot of action, it has a lot of comedy, it has a lot of crisis in it, and the payoff is pretty good. I think I agree with you because of Fluttershy Ye. The Fluttershy Ye is, uh, <laughs> is an okay part, but... No, it's, it's not okay. It's more than okay. <laughs> no, I mean, it's... Okay, um, you're looking at it from a fan's point of view because, like, yay, that is a really good part. But if you're new to the series and got no idea what's going on, that is just like, huh, okay, that's cool. But oh, yeah. um, the newcomers got no idea what's going on. So the payoff is the Sonic Rainbow at the end because of the music, the drama, the action, the anticipation. That's what makes it a good episode. Norman Senzo, you're a genius. Uh, I do try my best. <laughs> Let's see, another one for me is, let's see... I don't know, I think Bridal Gossip would be good. Bridal Gossip, Zikora. Yeah, the Zikora episode, because of the whole 180 for Fluttershy, because Fluttershy is so shy, and you get the voice, the really deep voice, like, oh. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, what happened to Fluttershy? Okay. I mean, if you want to get a new person to love the show. I mean, those are my three selections because it's funny, entertaining, and interesting. Hmm. Not bad, actually. Um, come to think of it, they all feature the main six. So, yeah, that's a good top three, I would say. Okay, and what about you, Tash? Me? Yeah, because this is a discussion about how to get people into the show by selecting episodes. Well, well I agree with you on the whole you kind of have to tailor it to what they're interested in. Indeed. So, I would sort of agree with you on the bit about suited for success. Not because I'm being sexist and saying girls should be interested in that sort of thing, but because the theme of it is quite complicated, as has been discussed. And fashion is something quite a few people are interested in. So, mm. that would be something that might catch their eye as well. Okay, so that will be your first selection. And your second? Uh, my second selection would probably be Luna Eclipse. Ooh, we're going to season two now. Really now? Yeah, why not? Okay, um, <laughs> I kind of agree and disagree because the thing is, they do not know who Luna is yet. Well, the story... Well, to watch Luna Eclipse, you don't necessarily have to know the background of how she got yeah, there because I, I it's like the character is... design. Sorry, yeah. So, sorry, you were saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think what Norman is trying to say is that they won't get the extra um, kick out of it because they haven't been introduced to uh, Luna in the beginning. So therefore, they actually have to see uh, Return of Harmony Part 1 and Part 2. Sorry, um, News, you're, yes. you you were saying uh, Friendship is Magic Part 1 and Part 2 because uh, Return of Harmony is the Discord episode. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I have to start again? No, 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 it's no problem because... Um, if we start, it won't be funny. Anyway, I'll just continue on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so um, as I was saying, what I meant to say was um, Friendship is Magic Part 1 and Part 2 first before they actually get to know who Luna is and uh, get get a better kick out of it in Luna Eclipse. Uh, I guess it depends on the perspective as well. Because yeah, to me, it's like you can still enjoy the episode on its own. Yeah, I mean, the episode is good. I, I have, I agree, the episode is good. You don't really need to know who Luna is, just that she's antisocial. <laughs> so she'll be it'll be extra yes. interesting Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second, well. me a second. I need to turn on my air conditioning. Oh, my battery, it went down. Okay, oh. now it's charging. So yeah, like I was saying, on the other hand, it will also give them the extra incentive to come back to the episode later on. When they have a better understanding of it as well. Okay, true. I mean, if we're going to include season two, um, I have my own season two list of what people should watch because I'm in the opinion of people should just watch season one first before they go into season two. Oh, 
I mean, that's just me. But if you want to talk about season two, I have my own top three list for season two. But anyway, let's move on to you, Tash, because it's not nice me interrupting you in your <laughs> talk. It's cool. Well, I guess for season one, like if you want to talk season one more often or not, then another one that I have to pick would be Party of One. Oh yeah, I agree. Hmm. Party of One. So this would be your third answer. Oh, sorry, um, so this would be your third selection. Yes. Party oh. of One. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure this would be a good episode to show girls. Well, I'm 20% sure it is. I don't know. I mean, some girls might not get it. Some girls no, might... No, I, I, Actually, that's the whole girl thing. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a universal cartoon thing, you know? Like, mental breakdowns are universally funny whether you're a guy or a girl. So, party on one is perfect. Okay. I mean, like, I got no idea about social psychology because I am not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um... You have to do with social psychology, even just the story of how it progresses. You can sort of like, I don't know, to me, I could sort of see where it was going with the episode and like, okay, I know what's going to happen at the end, but you still watch it just because it's, it's a fun episode. It's entertaining. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh. That's why I say uh, mental breakdowns are universally funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounded so wrong. No, it's true. <laughs> no, I mean, no, 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 uh, lesson zero, it's, it's great. News, news. When you say, like, um, mental breakdowns are universally funny. And when I'm thinking, like, huh, if you look at a person who's mentally breaking down, hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm just happening to you. That is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, to correct. Funny to watch in the cartoon world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree, okay. Um, well, I like that episode too. I, I wouldn't recommend it because it's borderline on strange and, I mean, you have to see the person's preference, but I, I would recommend it to somebody else. Preference, personal preference. Yeah, so, okay. what about you, News? Do you have any top trees that you would recommend to people? Well, as already mentioned, party of one has to be one of them. Okay. Because it's funny. Uh, second one, I think, would be Winter Wrap-Up. Just because of the song. Actually. Yep, yep, yep. I believe it's a good song that anybody can enjoy, and uh, it's a good moral to the story as well, one that can be really easily related to everyone. And third episode, I have to be a bit biased and say Sonic Rainbow, just because of such a shot. Okay, no problem, because yeah. uh, like I said, I put in Sonic Rainbow because of the Sonic Rainbow at the end, because no. that is an awesome scene. And I showed my auntie that episode, and she likes the show. She hasn't fallen into the four episode trap yet, but mm. so, so that's season one. What about season two? Do you guys have any episodes that you think should do a follow up to season one? Hmm. Lesson zero, for the same reason as uh, party of one mental breakdowns. Okay, I agree. And uh, let's see. Hmm. Give me some time to think about it. If that's the case, I'll go first then. Yeah. Um. For me, okay. If they watch a few episodes and like the whole thing and haven't watched the whole thing yet and they still want more to make a confirmation, I'll say... Um, oh, I don't know about Lesson Zero. Lesson Zero is kind of risky. Hmm. Okay, I'll just say Lesson Zero because it's one of my favourite episodes. And Sister Who Social. Sister Who Social is also a nice episode. Oh, yeah. And here's a... Another one I'm not sure because I like May the Pest Pet Win because of the song but Sweet and Neely is also K2. Hmm. But Super Squeezy Cider 6000 is also K1 too. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good episodes in Season 2. I don't know how to split it. Oh, boy. Um, okay, I'm just going to do something new. Pony Confidentials. That one is pretty good. So, oh, so my this would be Lesson Zero, Sisterhood Social, and po- oh wait, sorry, Ponyville sorry, it's not Pony Ponyville Confidential. Um, it's Mystery on the Friendship Express. That one. Ah. Just because of those scenes where it splits into other genres. <laughs> all the references. Oh. Yeah, all the references in the world. Pop culture. 
yeah, like the James Bond thing and the. Uh, I mean, it, it's just a. Really, Sherlock Holmes, come on. Uh, it's just fun. It's just fun. So those three. Let me restate my answer. It's Lesson Zero, Sisterhood Social, and Mystery on the Friendship Express. Those are the three I would pick for Season 2. What about you, Tash? That, those are good choices. I think for me, I'd probably go with Sweet and Elite because, well, it deals with the sort of inner turmoil that most people could relate to, I guess. Indeed, like, indeed. Do I pick, you know, like the peer pressure thing or, you know, hang out with my friends? It's like... Oh, always that thing that people have to deal with. True. Yeah, it's so oh. related. And also, don't forget the Twilight dancing scene. Oh, so all the bad. I think you're oh. speaking from a fan's point of view, Norman. Well, no, <laughs> because it's obviously bad. You you have to watch the episode to know what I mean. Because, oh, the dancing. Oh, it was so bad. so adorable and her, though. Yep, socially awkward. <laughs> and my second pick would probably be Hearts and Hoof Day. Ooh, Hearts and Hoof Day. Because it's cute and the song. <laughs> yes, the song is pretty cool. And your and third answer? My third answer would be, well, it's probably Dragon Quest. Oh, really? No, I wasn't expecting that. Why? Yeah, people probably would expect that. But I think it's just another point is that it's something else people can relate to. Finding your identity. Trying to find where you fit in. And peer pressure. <laughs> Another episode peer about peer pressure. pressure. More episodes about peer pressure. And everyone can relate to that. And also Crackle. Come on. <laughs> crackle is best dragon. Did you know in the previous episode we talked about the Crackle plushie? Oh, the Crackle plushie. Oh, that looked amazing. <laughs> yep. And we agreed on one thing that Crackle is best pony, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I still say no. Okay. Okay, what about you, News? What's your okay. three answer for season two? After looking at the list again, I would have to say Lesson Zero as number one because of Twilight Sparkle's mental breakdown. <laughs> okay. Followed by Sweet and Elite because Rarity and, um, you know, the high class people and stuff. It's All right. very relatable. So that would be a good episode to uh, show others. And the sisterhood social, Rarity again, uh, having conflict with a sibling. Hmm. So. I, I'm noticing here that all the three answers you pick is similar to our three that we picked too. <laughs> yeah, there's some cross, but uh, I haven't looked at the whole list yet. That would be my pick as well. So, hmm. yeah, great minds take a like, right? True indeed. Yeah. But nobody really mentioned a cantaloupe wedding. <sighs> You see, it's kind of like a cheat, right? If you're going to yeah. go for the season finale because, you know, it, it's all good. the episodes amount up to this and this is the big bang. True, true, true. Exactly. I mean, it has a good song, it has a good story, a lot of good conflicts in there. Like, it's totally perfect from what I can... Yeah. Okay, it's not 100% perfect, but it's totally perfect for it's, a season finale. It's good. They they, they did it right. Uh, yeah. Hasbro and uh, DHX and yeah. Yep, true. <laughs> I mean, if you can copy a Little Mermaid scene in your show and make it your own, I have to say, you did well. <laughs> Indeed. Give props to the writers, um, the Megan McCartney. the voice actors and all. Okay. Just everyone involved in the project. Yeah. Indeed. Brokoff's all around! Yay, Brokoff's all around. Okay. Since we don't have a guest this week, I asked on Facebook, what would you like us to talk about? And we got some answers. First is Sylvester Chang. He told us to talk about Grimdark. Hmm. So let me start by saying, sorry, not a fan of Grimdark. Move on. What about you, Tash? And honestly, I've heard it before, but I haven't like no really known what Grimdark is. Look um, it up. It's not... cupcakes. Yes. Grimdark is cupcakes. Oh, okay. No, not interested. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! You and me can be friends. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't mind if you want to be involved in that, but it's like, no, it's just not my thing. Sorry. Yeah. So what about you, News? Not really a fan of it, but there is a little morbid curiosity <laughs> that actually gets you into things. Like, why would somebody read cupcakes? Because everybody is talking about it, so you want to know what's going on and stuff. If yeah, I'm not mistaken, that. News, um, you got into the show by reading cupcakes, right? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> What happened was, I watched Party of One, noticed 
top YouTube top top comments was cupcakes. Oh gosh, cupcakes. So what is cupcakes? Oh, it's a green dark thing. Hmm. Maybe I'll read it one day later. A few days later, I read it and yeah, you know, it's never been the same. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, talking about that, I forgot to ask you the four important questions because technically you haven't answered them yet, news. Oh, I haven't. No. Well, I think now would be a good time as any to ask you those four important questions before we start oh, the show. <laughs> oh, I feel as a host. Go ahead. Okay, so question number one. Who is your favorite pony? Fluttershy. Oh, high five, man. High five. Oh, yes. Okay, bro, bro, bro. Yes, bro. So anyway, um, why... My cut on the screen. Nothing's happening. Oh, uh, I think I broke my screen. <laughs> so, okay, anyway, why Fluttershy? Why Fluttershy? Hmm. She's nice. She's the animal of kindness. She likes animals. She's cute. She's best pony. True indeed. I, I, I have to agree and more. So, yeah. um, second question is, what's your favourite episode? Favourite episode? Between Lesson Zero and Party of One, I'd still have to go with Lesson Zero. Twilight's mental breakdown was just... Hilarious. Yes. I love that face. <laughs> the Shishaya cat face. Oh. Clock is ticking! <laughs> and how did you become a fan of the show? Oh, gosh. Um, okay, it started when I was on some forums, some text-based game forums. I was just browsing through and somebody was wearing a Twilight Sparkle avatar. Uh, I had no idea what that was at first. I just knew it was some um, purple horse thing. And funny thing is, as the major exams came along, we all know that we, we do anything but study. We, we waste time on the internet. So yeah, I decided to find out more about what was this purple horse thingy. I found out that it was a My Little Pony character. Googled it. Found the Know Your Meme article. That was the first episode there. And that's how the question was made. Ah, interesting. The last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Family, it's well, more or less acceptance. Friends, uh, a bit of here and there, mixed results. Uh, some think it's okay, some think that it's really strange. But overall, it hasn't affected, um, this hasn't caused any problems. So, happy the way it is. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> let's move on to the Q&A of right. the members that ask us stuff online. <laughs> well, I should have asked you earlier, but I suck as a host. It's no nice, nice. <laughs> Okay, no problem then. So Amiro Harit told us to talk about how it's like to be in the MBS show. Any of you want to start first? Okay, I guess I'll start. It's been fun. Like, talking and stuff. And we know I can't stop talking, so this is... Yeah, it's been fun talking and and about ponies just all the ponies <laughs> true indeed so what about you news oh it has been an interesting experience thus far i keep on getting bugged to get on the show by a certain someone but i wonder it, who yeah, um i say it's still fun yeah i, I kind of enjoy it hmm, well as for me um how do i put this it's been an interesting experience for me to bring up the show, to get on guests, to bring in new members to the show, to edit the whole thing. I mean, I have to say that my Saturday nights will never be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> and he also asked us to talk about the most joyous moments you had. So, Tash, what's your joyous moment for being on the show? Joyous moments uh, has to be talking with Dusty Cat, I think. That was like a oh, fangirl moment. And it was fun. <laughs> well, what about you, News? I think the joyous moment would be, uh, how you say, um, participating in uh, the fandom, like contributing to the community, giving content instead of uh, just consuming content. Yeah, We're actually doing something Interesting, you know, to give back to the community. And you know, the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic community is just so rich and so diverse in uh, so many uh, creative outlets, in the arts, 
including music, podcasts such as this one. And also so, literature. Don't yeah. forget literature. Yeah, yeah, and fan fiction as well. So, in a way, it feels good to be actually uh, giving back and doing doing something worthwhile. I forget to mention in my episode where you interviewed me, um, also one of the reasons uh, why I started doing the podcast or the show is because I wanted to contribute back to the community because I have this thing where if I love something that much, I want to contribute back because uh, my previous fandom that I was in, I was kind of a B-list artist for that fandom. People knew who I was. But I was not that popular, but people knew who I was. So oh, okay. for, for this fandom, I thought that I wanted to give something back because everybody's been giving a lot and I've been taking, but I need to give something back to the community. That is the correct attitude, Norman. You're going to go far. Oh, you. But anyway, my <laughs> joyous moment is, hum, well, my joyous moment is just recording the show with you guys every week. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice of you, Norman. I mean, it it can be tired, really. Like, sometimes, like, I don't have the energy to, ah, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to do this, oh, why am I doing this, nobody's commenting, nobody's sending us emails, ah, oh, why? But when game time, I just sit down, hook up my laptop to the internet, and just sit down and just call you guys, say, hi, how are you doing? And then, like, getting that feedback from you guys, it brightens up my day. All right. I mean, like even yay. Even though if you can't come to the show, I mean, like, seriously, today, if you didn't come on to the show, I'll be doing the show all by myself. Uh, <laughs> Glad we got your back, bro. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, no problem. I mean, my joyous moment is having you guys on the show, really, to talk to. And the best thing about it is talking about ponies. <laughs> yay, ponies. Certainly, I don't have anybody to talk with about ponies in my real life. This is real life, Norman. Well, my real physical life, of not <laughs> online. <laughs> Amiral also asked, talk about the things that got in the way of the MBS show before. Hmm. Oh, this one I wouldn't have any uh, anything mm. to say. Yeah, I wasn't you probably there know this best, Norman. <laughs> hmm. Well, this is an interesting question because um, I honestly, uh, I don't know how to answer this one really. Um, okay, if got in the way um okay um back in episode 9 i don't really remember um i booked an interview with this one artist from el salvador but he never had the time to be online so i've been promoting the show everywhere like telling people that oh this guy's coming on this guy's coming on but in the end he didn't make it so uh, it was it was kind of ambitious really it was my first international guest and it also didn't pan out, so oh well, too bad for me then. And also, I emailed this one brony celebrity. He's kind of popular. I'm not going to mention his name. And got an email back. He told me that he couldn't do the interview because he was low on time. He was pretty busy with his stuff, and it's okay, no problem. So other than that, I mean, the MBS show is running pretty good. It's been lucky that we got Dusty Cat, Purple Tinker, and so on. Awesome. Tash, why don't you take this one? Okay, dokey, Loki. Um, so, Calvin Funtime says, Do some reflections about Season 2. Wow, that sounds pretty spiritual right there. Oh, give me a second. <laughs> I need to open the Season 2 list because I can't remember the whole episode. <laughs> me and my oh, memory. So many episodes. So... Well, I think we can relate this one to what we were talking about before. <laughs> mhm. Well, I guess the season two episodes, they have been, like, after season one, season two sort of just exceeded my expectation. True, I mean, they up the ante, they plus one everything, they, well, let's just say they crank it up by 11 and make it 20% cooler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, Um, who expected the episode? The Return of Harmony. Like, I was not expecting that at all. Uh, what, what do you mean exactly? In, in which context uh, of that episode? Well, the whole storyline, the whole thing that's going on with that, and the whole spoilers before... Not really spoilers, the whole preview of the episode. 
like they show discord they show them losing their wings and their horns like oh my god what the what the hell is this what's going on who is this person oh yeah they build up some hype about it right right before the start of season two yeah and like discord as an enemy like oh my god who is this person who is this overpowered person is that able to take away a pony's wings and horns and able to basically manipulate them who is this person i do remember something uh, now that you've mentioned it but it's not about uh discord and them losing their horns or their wings but it was you remember that stained glass window yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Shot. Yeah. And also ah. the, the, the chocolate green thingy. Yeah. The yeah. And that, those were the parts where, which actually I, I was curious about. Because I've actually listened to uh, Jason Thiessen's interview with, um, I think it was Serial Velocity of EQD. And he mentioned, uh, can you mention anything about that screen stained glass? And Jason Thiessen was like, uh, mm, uh, mm, because he couldn't. Because it's spoilers. Oh. That was the most uh, impacting thing which I remember before the start of season two. Oh, this yeah. was way back when before. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What about you, Tash? About season two? Yeah. What makes what 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 made the difference for you? Like, is there anything that, like, made you go, "Wow, this is way better than season one." Well, I guess the writing became a lot more complex as well and just like a lot more references you could definitely see a lot more references here and there when it came to the pop culture and just like yeah and the nods to derpy and everything they were still there which was really awesome now that you mentioned derpy like she appeared a lot in season two Mm, well besides the episode give me a second um a friend indeed is that the one yeah a friend indeed yeah, besides uh, talking in that episode, like, she always pops up, like, in Lesson Zero, she was fighting the mayor for Smarty Pants. In Luna Eclipse, she was in the tub of apples, and she was wearing a paper bag. Why? <laughs> I mean, all those, and, all those nods yeah. to Derpy, like, oh my god, it was so cool. Yes, Tash, you were saying? like a little game. <laughs> yeah, like, we have, where's Waldo? Now, where's Derpy? Spot the derpy. Hey, uh, talking about derpy, um, today on NTV7, we had the whole uh, season one episode. And I got up just in time to watch, well, half of it. And when derpy first showed up, I was like, derpy, there you are! <laughs> oh, you. I got no idea why, but it was just automatically like, oh god, what am I doing? Up early, <laughs> shouting about derpy, like, oh god. <laughs> okay. Oh, Derpy is best pony. Besides the writing, ooh, the song. The song in season two, wow, did it make a wonderful jump. Oh, yes, the song. Besides the smile song and the season finale, what are your favorite songs in season two? Season two? Um, pony, every pony should know. Um, in Sweet and Elite, I thought that was a really good song as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, that's a good song. What about you, uh, News? really hard to pick because I like all of the songs really I mean sure it's a few of them are like a quiet taste but eventually I I, I think they're all great um, I just have to say that Daniel Ingram is a wonderful composer he, he did a great job on all of them true true so okay, my personal favourite for season 2 well besides um, the final pet song my personal favourite would be the super squeezy side of the 6000 song Super Speedy Tidal Squeezy 6000. Yep. I don't know why, yeah. but I just like that song because of how complex it is to sing that one. Because it's a tongue twister? <laughs> um, well, it's like, um, what did I wrote down before? Give me a second. I forgot what I wrote down in the show notes. Because it's like what um, Amy Keating Rogers tried to do with her smile song. Because there was a lot of, what is it? Um, pattern sections. Ah, uh, yes. Toxing, if you want to be in layman's term. Because, like, hello, bird of mine. I got no idea how the lyric goes, but it's you should know. <laughs> yeah, like, oh god, it was so cool. And the animation for the bopping ponies, so cute. They look like spiders. <laughs> hmm? They look like spiders. 
<laughs> what? what can you do? You can't move your arms and you only have four legs. <laughs> okay. Four hooves, you mean. Yes, yeah, sorry, four hooves. <laughs> well, anyway, like, you have to work with what you have. Well, that's true. You know, speaking of animations, I think the animation from season one to season two oui. is quite a good leap. Yeah, it's a fantastic leap, I think. You can really see the difference. Yep, yeah. yep. I would say. If yes. I remember right, they talk about uh, in season one, they couldn't do much with the hair. Oh, sorry, the mane and tails. But in season two, they really improve a lot with the hair and mane. Yeah, I'd agree on that. Animation is smoother. It looks, it just flows better, more fluid. So, news. Why don't you take the next one? Okay, the final question comes from Halija Wazir, and the question is: uh, Talk about Scootaloo. Hmm, interesting. What mm. do you think about Scootaloo, uh, Norman? Scootaloo is an interesting pony. Um, uh, pony? Yes. It's a chicken. <laughs> oh, you! <laughs> no, but. <laughs> oh. Well played, my friend. Well played. <laughs> okay, um, seriously, Scootaloo is an interesting character. Um, I have to view Scootaloo from two different perspectives, really. One from the official view and one from the fandom point of view. Because officially, we got no idea who is Scootaloo's parent, what does she do, who is she, where does she live, and so on. Even Dusty Cat made a joke about her living in Detroit. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, who is Kutaloo? And who are her parents? Oh, yeah. I actually agree with you on that. This, because we do not know much about her, this leaves room for potential of character development. True. And I think, if not, I'm very sure, they're going to do that in maybe season three. I they're hope gonna develop so. Characters more. I mean, like, I hope so, because Kutaloo has no parents by now. Like, come on, no parents, no sisters, no relatives, no nothing. Nothing yet. Anyway. And basically, how did she get involved in the royal wedding? Uh, it's magic. You don't have to explain nuts. <laughs> That's your answer for everything, isn't it? <laughs> no, okay, but seriously, um, we need more info in season two. Seriously, we need more info. But the origins of Scootaloo. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, it would be very interesting that if both of her parents were not Pegasus. So, like, a reversal of baby cake, sort of. Yeah, because, like, baby cakes explains that you don't have to be a pegasus or a unicorn to have babies who are pegasus or unicorns. You just need to have some DNA involving them. Some Sorry. DNA. <laughs> yeah, and, like, if they had Scootaloo's parents being, like, you both unicorns and she's a pegasus, like, oh, I'm so ashamed of you. <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting, not really to say I'm ashamed, but I mean, the parents can do more things and she can just only fly. And remember how she can't really fly? Well, because her parents yeah. are both unicorns or both earth ponies or the mix. Okay, now we're getting into some deep, deep things here. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a topic of debate. Well, it will be fun to predict things. Okay, um, my point, my final point of view... <clears throat> I have read a lot of fanfic that involves Scootaloo. One of my favorite is the fanfic called Scooter Mum. It sounds funny, but actually, Celestia is her mother. What? Uh-huh. I know. Take that as you may. And it's kind of an interesting story. Like, besides the fact that Celestia is her mother, it's really good. And also, um, there's this one fanfic about her parents being chickens. <laughs> Seriously, chickens. Hmm. <laughs> I got no idea how and why. I think it was an EQD's front page, and I decided to read it. And oh my god, what, was it interesting? You have an interesting taste in fan fiction, Norman. Well, if it's on EQD, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, basically, um, like I said, Scooter is an interesting pony. Like we can debate a lot of things, but we cannot confirm anything yet. That's true. true, that, true that. So, I mean, I've been talking about her a lot. What about you guys? What do you think? Mm. Tash, why don't you go first? Uh, let's see. Scootaloo. Once it, it had as much screen time as all the other CMCs, 
And yeah, it would definitely be interesting to see more of her in season 3, I guess. And see how her character develops more. Because right now, we're not seeing a lot of her as, like, she's not growing as much as the others, I think. She's basically a boring character then? No. Boring. I would say she's like more there to feel like a need, but it's like her p- the p- is there, but it's like not being used to the best of its ability. Mm. If you guys understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like how Sweetie Belle was in season one. Mm, yeah, exactly. What about you, News? Yes, as I already mentioned before, I think there's a lot of potential for character development, and it just has to happen sooner or later. Most likely in season three, where we'll get to see some backstory behind her. How are they going to flesh it out? It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So, I don't think we got anything else, right? Uh, no. Uh, you guys want to add anything? Um, no. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so on to the next topic. Email time? Not this week. Ah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The MBS Show's Twitter page is at the MBS Show. I'm at Norman Sanzo. And I'm at Tasha Arena on Twitter. And News Pony doesn't have a Twitter. <laughs> and I'm on the MBS Show. Okay, you can do that too. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Sasha Irina. I'm the news pony. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Don't you worry now, school.